okay now let us look at the classification of signals signals can also be classified under several categories the first category is periodic and non periodic signals periodic and non periodic signals a signal f of t can be said to be periodic if it satisfies the condition f of t plus r minus capital t is equal to f of t where this capital t is called the fundamental period capital t is called fundamental period so this is if f of t is a continuous time signal so if f of t plus or minus capital t if it is equal to f of t then it, then the signal is is said to be a periodic signal with a period equal to capital t periodicity is nothing but the repetition rate if the signal has a repetitive nature then it is said to be a periodic signal that means the same signal repeats after a certain amount of time the periodicity property can also be applied to discrete signals say x of n is a discrete signal and x of n is classified to be a periodic signal if x of n plus r minus capital n is equal to x of n if this discrete signal x of n repeats after capital n samples then it is said to be a periodic signal so here capital n is called the fundamental period of the discrete signal x of n fundamental period of discrete signal x of n however if for discrete signals this n must be rational number so it 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 should have a form like p by q form so if n is rational then only it is said to be a periodic signal a discrete time sinusoid which is similar to a continuous time sinusoid but now this sinusoid takes discrete values so this can be considered to be a periodic if its frequency is a rational number because a sinusoidal signal has certain frequency repetition rate so if this frequency if it is a rational number then then which is called a periodic signal we will look at more examples of the continuous time and discrete time signals we will also check if they are periodic or non periodic so if you have discrete time sin sinusoids two discrete time sinusoids and if this if, if they have frequencies which are separated by an integer multiple of 2 pi then they are said to be identical to each other so the highest rate of oscillation in a discrete time sinusoid is possible when its angular frequency omega is equal to pi or if this frequency f is equal to 1 by 2 so if omega is equal to pi or f equal to 1 by 2 then the rate of oscillation of this discrete sinusoid will be very high so we say that the highest rate is achieved so the highest rate of oscillation in the discrete time sinusoid is possible only when omega is equal to pi or f is equal to 1 by 2 now if you have more than one sinusoid so you can take the sum of these sinusoids but the sum of this two or more sinusoids say you have two sinusoids so sum of two sinusoids or more than two sinusoids it may or may not be periodic may or may not be periodic so there is no guarantee that if you 
take the sum of two sinusoids or more than two sinusoids the resultant will be a periodic signal it depends on the relationship between their respective periods or frequencies so if the ratio of these two periods say in this case if these two sinusoids have periods t1 and t2 so if the ratio of these two periods t1 by t2 if this can be represented as some rational number uh, which has a p by q format then this sum can be considered to be a periodic signal then the sum of these two signals will be periodic signals otherwise this cannot be a periodic signal so in general sum of two sinusoids sum of two periodic sinusoids may not be periodic but if if the if the ratio of the fundamental periods of these two sinusoids is a rational number then the sum can be considered to be a periodic signal let us take some examples to check whether a signal is a periodic or aperiodic so if the signal is not periodic then it is referred to be a periodic signal or a periodic signal so let's take some example cos 3 pi t is this a periodic signal let's say it is a periodic signal we don't know let at the end we will see whether it is a periodic signal or not if it is periodic signal then we will find out the periodicity of this signal if it is periodic we know it has to satisfy a condition that it is cos of 3 pi of t plus capital t is equal to cos of 3 pi t this is under the assumption that it is periodic with, pe with periodicity capital t and using the mathematical entity cos a plus b which is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b so we get cos of 3 pi t cos of 3 pi capital T minus sine of 3 pi T into sine of 3 pi capital T equal to cos of 3 pi T so if you equate the coefficient of cos 3 pi T in both LHS and RHS then you get cos 3 pi capital T is equal to 1 or 3 pi capital T which is equal to cos inverse of 1 and cos inverse of 1 is 2n pi where n is equal to 1 2 3 dash 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 so if you take n equal to 1 because several values of n are possible but we will take the lowest value of n that is n equal to 1 in that case 3 pi capital T is equal to 2 pi or capital T is equal to 2 by 3 so which clearly indicates that it is a rational number so always check for the fundamental period if it is a rational number that is 2 by 3 seconds then the signal can be considered to be a periodic signal so cos 3 pi t can be declared as a periodic signal with period equal to 2 by 3 seconds that is 0.667 seconds so this signal is periodic that means it repeats every 2 by 3 seconds so mathematically you can use this concept to find out whether a signal is periodic or not if it is periodic then we should definitely indicate the periodicity otherwise there is no point in calling a signal as a periodic signal if it is a periodic signal that means it has no periodicity then there is no there is no meaning in describing the capital T that is the fundamental period of the signal let us take one more example now in this example let's say the signal is cos 5t check whether it is periodic or aperiodic 
Let us assume again that this signal is periodic with periodicity capital T. Then cos of phi t plus capital T should be equal to cos of phi t. You can, you can even take cos of phi t minus capital T equal to cos phi t. So if you will get the same result. So this is equal to cos phi t cos capital T minus sin phi t sin capital T which is equal to cos phi t. If you equate the coefficient for cos phi t, what do you get? You get cos of oh, this is cos phi of t plus capital T. So it is cos phi t minus cos phi t cos phi capital T minus sin phi t sin phi capital T equal to cos phi t. So you get cos of phi capital T equal to 1 which is phi t is equal to cos inverse of 1 or phi t is equal to 2n pi and when you put n is equal to 1 then you get phi t is equal to 2 pi or t is equal to 2 pi by 5 seconds and this clearly shows that this is irrational number and by from the definition we know that if the periodicity or if the fundamental period is a irrational number then this signal is called as a periodic signal or non periodic signal so this signal does not repeat in itself okay so there is no periodicity attached to this kind of signal so in nature we we find a periodic signals as well as periodic signals so every signal has got its own uh, usage and every signal will be used in many places in the communication system. Now this is one kind of classification periodic signals and aperiodic signals. Now let us look at the second kind of classification which is odd and even signals. <coughs> 